So looking at the assembly videos, there's still some more uh, resistors to mount. So we have 12 10K ohm resistors that go down here by these switches. And I have already uh, cut these out of the packaging and bent the leads. So we'll go ahead and see if we can get these to insert. He did say the uh, package on some of the 10Ks is a little bit longer than it was on the 3Ks and it can sometimes make it kind of hard to get it in. And of course that one's in the wrong orientation. I swear I checked that before I put it in, but apparently I didn't. They're not polarized, but again I prefer the tolerance band to be the same direction, in this case towards the top of the board for all the resistors. It's just a, a kind of a detail preference for me. Certainly won't affect anything if you don't do the same. I just think it makes for a nicer build. So we'll get these inserted. Resistors. These are definitely a little bit tighter going in. Recam ones were. There's one there that I can see that probably is going to have to be rebent. I don't think it's going to flush down on its own. Yep, these are a little bit tricky. place. And we will solder those up. looking solder joints. And I'm not sure why. Okay, we'll solder the other pins. And attempt to do it on camera here. Not that watching me do more soldering is going to uh, do you any good.
and snake the solder through the component leads and they of course keep deflecting the solder away from where I want it to go come on that is those 12 10k ohm again what we're working on here there's components on both sides of the board in the install here so again pay attention to the silk screen it will guide you to what side of the board the component should be mounted on There is a optional 10k ohm resistor up here that I'm just going to go ahead and put in because it was supplied. And there's a transistor that goes up here. And this has to do with reprogramming, I guess, the uh, microcontroller. Uh, but per his notes, I just bumped the camera again. Per his notes, you actually have to. Uh, modify, add a couple jumper wires onto the microcontroller PCB itself for that to work. But I'm going to put them on. I, I would guess I will never use them, but they're here in case they're ever needed. Now these transistor leads are very close together. And the glasses I'm on are not good enough for and spacing that close. Yeah, I've already created a bridge, it looks like. Oh, come on, that shouldn't be that hard to solder. Damn, that is really ugly. Check for solder bridges here. Nope. Nope. Okay. We're good. I'm going to start it out with the solder bridge. We've got the reset switch. This mounts up here snaps down into place and then gets soldered. Now it's the reset switch. Sorry, I'm guessing I was in the way there. We've got pin headers. A long one. This will be tacked two corners. Then press it tight into place. And then finish soldering it. So let me tack two corners. Apply some pressure to it. And it wasn't in flush. Didn't really expect it to be. It looks flush. Finish soldering it. I said it before, this is not my normal soldering posture. Arm position, head position. This is me trying to not be between the camera and the work just made this a little more challenging I 
There's another dual row up here. And tape it down into place. Two corners, flush, solder. Again, paying attention to which side of the board it's of course mounted on. It's on the side of the board with the silk screen for it. Overall, it's been a pretty easy assembly. I think the thing that's made it more challenging for me is dealing with cameras and weird soldering angles and uh, not having as clear a sight to the board as I normally have. There's a by four here. Four. I'm just going to solder in this case one corner because he's small. And without putting my pin on the finger on the pin and preheating here, I'll just push it up flush. He's small enough that one pin will be enough to hold him squarely in place. getting really close here. Uh, I've pretty much followed his order. I don't think... Do we do anything with these? I don't remember. Oh, come on, iPad. I really prefer a printed manual to an online manual, but so be it. see where he's going. Just click into place. The mounting pins. So he's putting in the DB nines. Spring them on your clip. And hold them down. So you won't need to take them down. So we can do the same. These holes are labeled spares and it looks like he's not stuffing these here either, which is fine. So we will uh, Solder up the DB9s. Clip through and we'll solder these up as well just for mechanical strain relief. Now, just like the uh, reset switch, I do recommend soldering in these mounting points. Uh, that just adds a bit of strain relief if you are going to be using these connectors regularly, plugging things in and out, you don't want all the strain to be taken up. 
of these through hole pins. This is going to take quite a bit of heat yes, and a bit of solder. So park your solder and line on the other side and get the solder started right where the tip of the iron meets the mounting pin. And you can quite literally fill the whole hole, but you don't need to, so long as you've got a reasonable amount of solder building up in that void. It's like taking a lot of heat, but as he just commented on. That should be providing some support. I think with that, we're caught up to where he is in the video. I'm looking at this assembly video 9. Okay, let's just check everything. It looks like we've got everything covered. All the components are now in. And the next video is going to be about inserting the ICs, and at that point, okay. we can actually do my board looks like his, so go ahead and start.